So what I did was, you know, the stochastics uh, gave a certain type of a pattern when a moving average was trending, and I had noticed something. The lead stochastics, when a, st when a stock was uptrending, okay, and the stock pulled back, oftentimes the stochastics would stall out, and the lead stochastics would look like it was going to cross right back down. But if that five-period moving average support held, oops, and it bounced, the stochastics underneath would actually form a type of wedge. The lead stochastics would actually slope up, okay? And that was very interesting because when that happened, it triggered uh, an explosive move to the upside, okay? And so I coined that thing a mini pup, all right? It was a power uptick breakout. Um, and with that mini pup, okay, the beauty of this whole thing was that, well, that five period moving average uh, lead support on the uptrend was tested. It was actually tested. It's not something where I just came up with a number out of my head and said, well, you know, Apple should not break this price or Apple should hold this price. No, this is a price where the market participants came in, the bears, came, you know, the sellers came in, the shorts came in, they tried to short it, take it down. They couldn't. There's a tension there and then, bam, it sloped back up, shorts got squeezed, buyers came in and beautiful. And the market showed me that. Okay, that's a market proven support level. And it's a dynamic support level because as time goes on, the buyers are going to keep bidding it higher. On the, now, the other thing was that, you know, I added more stuff, Bollinger Bands, okay? Um, and the, uh, the funny thing is that these Bollinger Bands were actually very nice levels to use as price targets. When the stock got squeezed up, okay, that, the Bollinger Bands actually gave me a nice target to aim for as the stock moved higher. What about my trail stop? Well, my trail stop's simple, okay? The whole reason why the mini pup formed was because formed was because they couldn't break that support. But if they do break that support, what am I going to do? I'm going to get out. Okay? So that five period moving average is a live dynamic moving trail stop. All right? So there's your mini pups. Um, and then, well, you know, uh, <clears throat> I took that from a one minute, okay, and uh, I added a three minute about, what is it, two years later. I'm real slow. <laughs> okay. So what do you think happened five years later? Uh, I decided to add an eight and a 13 minute, all right? Um, and then a 60 minute. And then, 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 then something interesting happened. I realized that this mini pup pattern that forms great even on a one minute time frame, it works great on a three minute time frame. Well, that's gonna work great, and it did work great on an eight and a 13 minute time frame, okay? In other words, what I realized was the pattern was linear. So whatever happened on a one minute would apply to a three minute, 13, 60, a daily or a weekly, all right? The only difference was the, was the, uh, the playing field or the scope, the scope of the price range was greater, okay? So all of a sudden, a lot of things started to click. Um, you know, when a person, when, whenever someone asks you, you know, if, if a stock is in an uptrend, all right, well, you have to be more specific because a stock can be in an uptrend and a downtrend at the same time. It depends on the time frames. A stock can be in a downtrend on a three minute time frame, okay, but be, still be in an uptrend on a daily time frame. All right, so basically when I saw, you know, a 60 minute mini pop, okay, initially I, I'd be like, wow, wow, that's great. Let's just jump in right now. The stock would collapse. You know, and I'm saying to myself, well, this is, this is kind of odd. But as it turned out, another, another word that I learned is called convergence. In other words, a 60 minute cannot form, and you can't see the explosiveness of a 60 minute mini pup break out until your shorter time frames, okay, are aligned with that. In other words, your, the momentum on the shorter time frames have to align. The stochastics have to cross back up on the shorter, t shorter time frames, okay? And that's what causes a, a solid explosive move. In fact, if, if you get three or more of these time frames and put them together, you have what's known as a perfect storm. And, th and therefore, and, th and thus, is the evolution of what I call a perfect storm pattern. And so, the other thing that this created for me, okay, first I learned uh, linearity, all right? Would apply, a pattern that works in one time frame is gonna work in all time frames, okay? Convergence, when, that, when, when the patterns, 
when the pattern or the direction, okay, is lined up on the time frames, okay? But it also gave me something else. When those things come into effect, it gives you something else. It, the wider time frames, if you can consider them like a Doppler radar, and this is the perfect analogy, okay, the wider time frames are superior. I mean, they, they are, they're, they're deeper. They show more depth. A wider trend, a wider mini pup, ultimately is going to continue and, and the trend is going to form and break out. Meanwhile, the shorter time frames may be in their own little, you know, hot mess, okay? But once they turn around, the upside is going to be explosive. So it's kind of like, then I realize it's kind of like, well, hey, if the 60 minute and the daily isn't a mini pup, okay, uh, that's telling me we're going to break out to the upside. But why is the stock down? It's because the three minute stochastics and the eight minute may be down. So what that tells me is it's like, it's as if it's, it's uh, sunny right now, right, 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 out, right out front in front of my house, but the weatherman tell me there's a hurricane coming, you know, um, 100 miles down the road. You see what I'm saying? It's a Doppler effect. So what that, tell, what that gives me is a power of foreshadowing, okay, or foresight, or foreshadowing, <laughs> all right? So what, is this all, what does this all mean? Well, what did we do? Um, I took simple components, okay, and I created napalm. <laughs> All right, how do you make napalm? Styrofoam and gasoline. Diesel and gasoline. What's that? Diesel and gasoline. Exactly, exactly. And that's basically what it was. Um, taking very basic components, okay, refining them and putting them together. All right, now, it didn't just end there, okay? The, the potency of the napalm. Okay, and when and what environments it's more effective in. See, that's all part of it. All right, it's never going to be just one aspect, because there's this thing called context. Context. Okay, and as a trader, most important context you have to be absolutely aware of is the markets. Okay, and going back to the whole mutation thing, um, yeah, you know the argument can be, hey, the markets are more efficient. You know, prices, the spreads are are thinner and uh, consumers are getting their money's worth or their value, okay? You know, it's, it's BS. <laughs> Don't tell anybody, but it is. All right, the games are still around. Um, it, they've just evolved now, you know? Um, if you all ever see your time of sales screens and you see trades go off with four decimal places over, you know, four decimal places over instead of two, all right, it's illegal to have four decimal places over uh, when you go through the exchanges. Okay, there's these things called dark pools, and these dark pools, whether it, that's pretty much the same thing as what Inca and or Instanet was back in the old days, where the retail guys don't have access to it. Okay, but the big boys, they do, and they can trade amongst themselves. It's the exact same thing. Instead of in, Inca or Instanet back in the old days, now they're called dark pools. All right, and you've got the algorithm programs that's going to come in, and they will swoop in four decimal places over within a penny spread and just buy and sell, buy and sell, buy and sell, okay? So if you're, you know, if you're a trader or anybody, basically, that, you know, the momentum's coming down, mini inverse pop on the stochastics, this is great. Hey, let me, throw, let me throw my orders in there. Let me sprinkle some in. And you realize, I'm not even getting hit. What, look at all these trades going off. Well, that's just the programs that came in and just stole your liquidity. You see what I'm saying? So you're still getting screwed, <laughs> all right?